welcome to Dubai, a strange exotic blend of Arab tradition and global glamour. Dubai has historically been a trading capital. Mac McClelland is a business consultant here. For the last over a thousand years has been the place that traders come to from East Africa, the Indian subcontinent, Iran, and, and even into Asia, came into the Dubai Creek and did their trading. Today, with its head-spinning luxury and a secretive banking system, Dubai is also a popular spot for the filthy rich. This is the Palm Jumeirah, a man-made island chain so big it is visible from space. Homes on the Palm start at $2 million, reportedly owned by the likes of soccer star David Beckham, Brad Pitt, and Angelina Jolie, and a young boy named Haydar Aliyev. In 2009, when he was 11, Haydar bought not just one home in Dubai, but nine, together worth tens of millions of dollars. His older sisters, who are in their 20s, own a few of their own, according to official records first reported by the Washington Post. They live the high life, the parties, the fashion, the glamour, quite an achievement since they come from here. Azerbaijan. A former Soviet Republic on the shores of the Caspian Sea, where the average worker makes about $420 a month. Those youthful tycoons are the children of this man, the president of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev. He took over in 2003 following the death of his father, whose likeness is still everywhere in the capital city. U.S. diplomats once compared the Aliyevs to the Corleone family from The Godfather. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. According to a State Department cable uncovered by WikiLeaks, Ilham Aliyev is a cross between the calculating Michael on the outside and Sonny on the inside. A volatile mix in a country that on paper has money to burn. That's Yanar Dog, a popular local attraction, a hillside so oozing with oil it is constantly in flames. Azerbaijan boasts 7 billion barrels of proven oil reserves, the 19th largest in the world, and it's home to a million barrel a day oil pipeline. There's so much oil and natural gas that Azerbaijan's economy has tripled in size in the last 10 years. The trade surplus now $12 billion, and all of the revenue goes into a sovereign wealth fund, now approaching $30 billion, all of it controlled by the Aliyev regime. And where there's oil, there are Americans. This is the annual meeting of the U.S.-Azerbaijan Chamber of Commerce, the gala dinner at a converted trading post along the ancient Silk Road. And those are U.S. oil executives enjoying the local hospitality. Prospects of the economy going forward increased its outlook for Azerbaijan from stable to positive. Here, Azerbaijan big, has big potential. The business sessions of the meeting include presentations on opportunities in Azerbaijan for U.S. businesses. The geography here is being transformed into a real economic asset by virtue of large-scale infrastructure investment. Mahir Iskender is the chamber's chairman. How important is it to get American investment here? It's really critical that companies learn about the opportunities, especially when there's an economic oil boom happening in the country. In the next 15 years, Azerbaijan is expecting $200 billion profit coming from the oil. And where is this money is going to go? Where the money is going is precisely the issue. Tom Main follows the region for the anti-corruption group Global Witness. It's very upsetting to see where the country is going because it is a very rich country in terms of its oil and gas, but this wealth isn't going to the people. Living standards in Azerbaijan have slowly improved as the oil and gas industry has grown. And in the heart of the capital, there has been a boom in construction, including new high-rises and this billed as the world's tallest flagpole until Tajikistan built one nine feet taller. A more dubious distinction, Azerbaijan ranks 143rd out of 183 countries for corruption, according to Transparency International. Critics say too much of the oil wealth goes to the ruling family and out of the country. Assumed by states 
are of the greatest importance. Under the law in Azerbaijan, the president cannot hold outside business interests, and his government salary is $280,000 a year. But through a web of offshore companies, we found 11 in Panama alone, the Aliyev family is cleaning up. These are all private residences. Those homes in Dubai are said to be worth $75 million. First Lady Maribon Alieva, who is also a member of parliament but rarely attends, is said to have a pension for plastic surgery, according to a State Department cable, which notes she appears unable to show the full range of facial expression. First daughter Arzu stars in commercials promoting tourism in Azerbaijan. Her older sister Layla is high society all the way. She's married to a Russian pop star and publishes a fashion magazine. Together, the sisters have major stakes in Azerbaijan's mobile phone and aviation industries. How did Leila Alieva, at 25 years old, get to be so rich? We wanted to know. So we caught up with her at a black tie reception at New York's Plaza Hotel. She had come to New York to accept an award for her work with the Children's Cancer and Blood Fund. I want to ask you a little bit about, about yourself and your accomplishments at, forgive me, a young age. How have you achieved such success at, at this stage in life? I think the main thing is to have goals. If you have goals, then it's easier to achieve them, of course. It's hard not to escape the contrast between an event like this, this sort of setting, and some of what we saw in Azerbaijan. And I know that some questions have been raised about where your family's wealth comes from, where your, where your business interests come from, and I, I wonder if you can uh, shed some light on that. Well, I do some business myself, and also my husband is in retail. But uh, here I'm uh, just representing the culture and everything, so it's not business, it's more. Well, I mean, what would the people of Azerbaijan think about an event so opulent? Um, uh, I, I hope that they're proud that I'm receiving it, because as I said, I'm not receiving it for myself, but for the whole generation of young people of Azerbaijan. The people are very happy. Her handlers politely cut the interview short and kept our cameras at a distance. No, no, you can't take a picture. Of that. Eamon Milley is one member of Leila Alieva's generation of young people. He is not particularly proud of his country's ruling family. I didn't want to stay silent. I want to live in the country where there is a rule of law, which is democratic. Some of his protests have been light-hearted, like this video poking fun at President Aliyev after local media reported he imported two donkeys from Germany for $80,000, or about 16 years' income for the average citizen. That same year, Milley stood in front of the UN to protest a decision to scrap presidential term limits. Then he prepared to return home to Azerbaijan. Many people, after I did that protest and after I made speech at Columbia University, they were warning me, don't come back to Baku because, you know, something can happen with you. I didn't listen to them. That's when he learned the consequences of speaking out. We were with my friends in restaurant and two sportsmen, they just came and started to beat us up. There was no fight. There was just attack. But when he went to police to report the incident, he was arrested for hooliganism. He spent 17 months in jail. Did I do something wrong? Is there anything I regret about? And my answer was no, there is nothing I regret about. Where was the U.S. government in all of this? The State Department issued a press release saying it regrets the affair, calling it a step backwards. By July 2010, while Eamon Milley was still in jail following his protests in the United States, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton was all smiles as she met with President Aliyev in Baku. The bonds between the United States and Azerbaijan are deep, important, and durable. At the time, she said she did discuss Milley's case with the president, but in private. In that WikiLeaks cable that compared the Aliyev to the Corleones, a U.S. diplomat called the relationship with Azerbaijan a choice between U.S. interests and U.S. values. We found U.S. interests in the form of all that oil have frequently won out. At that U.S.-Azerbaijan Chamber of Commerce meeting, we wanted to ask President Aliyev about human rights, about oil, and about his family's wealth. But the president canceled his planned keynote speech. Instead, we spoke to the finance minister, Samir Sharifov. 
Is enough of the growth in the economy getting to the people, improving their standards? Yes, it does. It certainly does. Would you say this is a personal commitment on the president's part? President Aliyev announced several times that he doesn't want to have any poverty in Azerbaijan. And this is the policy which is implemented. But for the unconnected here, a mansion in Dubai is still far out of reach.